time ago, a man named Elimelech left his hometown and moved to the land of Moab. He and his wife Naomi had two sons, and they were very happy there. The boys grew up and married young, wonderful women named Orpah and Ruth. When Elimelech died, Naomi went to live with her sons and their wives. She stayed with them for ten years, but then something terrible happened. Both of Naomi's sons died. She cried and cried. In those days, women were not allowed to work, so Naomi, Ruth and Orpah were not able to earn money. They had very little to eat and no one to protect them. Naomi decided to go back home to Bethlehem where she grew up. Orpah and Ruth followed her, but Naomi said, No, you're both young and have your whole lives ahead of you. Stay here in Moab, find new husbands and have children of your own. I don't want you to be stuck looking after an old lady like me. Ruth and Orpah cried. They loved Naomi. They didn't want to leave her. Finally, Orpah gave in and went back, but Ruth just wouldn't. Don't make me leave you, she cried. I want to go wherever you go. Your people are now my people, and your God is now my God. Where you die, I'll die. Naomi realized Ruth had made up her mind. She hugged her, saying, I'm so happy to have such a devoted daughter-in-law. They walked together, talking about all that had happened and what they would do in Bethlehem. When they arrived, everyone was pleased to see them. They called out, Naomi is back. But she shook her head and said, Don't call me Naomi any more. Call me bitter. My husband and sons are dead. My life is ruined. Ruth and Naomi found a small place to stay, but they needed food. Fortunately, it was time to reap the barley. At harvest time, the workers walked through the fields in groups, picking the barley. Ruth decided to follow them and pick up any bits that might get dropped. She worked from early morning and ended up in a field belonging to a rich man named Boaz. When Boaz came out to greet his servants, he saw a beautiful young woman among them. Who is that? he asked the foreman. He explained that she'd asked him for permission to collect the leftover barley in the field. He said she had been working hard all day. Boaz called Ruth over and invited her to stay in his fields, collecting the barley behind his workers, and even offered her the drinking water he provided for them. Ruth was amazed. She fell at his feet and thanked him for his kindness. At lunchtime, Boaz invited Ruth to join them. She was given so much to eat that she kept some for Naomi. Then Boaz secretly told his servants to make Ruth's work easy by dropping extra grain for her to collect. By the end of the day, Ruth's sack was full. Naomi was astounded at how much food Ruth had brought home. Ruth told her all about Boaz and his kindness. Naomi was delighted. God hadn't forgotten them at all. At the end of the harvest, Boaz threw a big party for all his servants. Naomi told Ruth of her plan. Dress beautifully and arrive a little late. When Boaz goes off into the field to rest after the party, follow him. But don't let anyone see you. Once Boaz is asleep, lie down near his feet. In our culture, this is how you show someone that you want to marry them. When Boaz woke up during the night, he was surprised to see her. He was amazed at her courage and her wonderful heart. He was pleased that she had chosen him. But Boaz explained that it was not that simple. According to their laws, the man who owned Naomi's land had first rights to marry her. Before it got light, Ruth got up to leave. But Boaz stopped her. Then he filled her shawl with barley as a gift for Naomi. When Ruth arrived home, Naomi was pleased. She knew that Boaz would sort out everything that day. Boaz went straight to the town square and found the man who had first rights to Naomi's land. He called ten other men to be witnesses to their discussion and said, There's a field for sale belonging to Naomi. You are the closest relative to Naomi and have first option on it. Do you want to buy it? Hmm, said the man. I think I will. Then Boaz said, If you buy it, you will have to marry Ruth and she will be your responsibility. 
The man said he did not want to do that. He had a family of his own to look after, so he agreed to let Boaz buy the field. And you know what that meant. Ruth and Boaz were married, and they were so happy. They invited Naomi to live with them, and soon Ruth gave birth to a son. Naomi was thrilled. It was like she had been given another son. She spent all her time looking after him and cuddling him. The neighbors even began to call him Naomi's son. His name is Obed, and he would become a very famous grandfather one day, the grandfather of King David. Ruth was devoted to Naomi. She wouldn't leave her, even when things went wrong and everything seemed hopeless. God honored Ruth's decision to trust him and gave her a loving husband and children of her own. He mended Naomi's broken heart. She was no longer bitter. She was happy. He surrounded her with family and gave her a grandson to love. God is really faithful.